Hi, in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to save large language models locally and how to run them locally on your PC. So I'm going to use the transformers library from Hugging Face. Uh, and there are also other ways, such as using Olama to run the large language models locally, but it's up to you what you want to uh, go for. So let's jump in the code. Um, so be sure that you're having this library already installed. And uh, be sure also that you have your Hugging Face access token. So I have created this access token just for this demo. So it's not going to be reusable uh, when I'm going to uh, give you the access to the Jupyter Notebook uh, code. So this is going to be used for authentic authenticating ourselves with Hugging Face. We have to specify also the directory that we want to save our model and the name of our model. So I'm going to use Microsoft Phi 2 because it's a small model, so it's not going to occupy a lot of space and it's also quite fast for the inference. For saving the model, um, we need not just for saving mod the model, but for running the large language model locally, we have to save two objects. One is the tokenizer, which is converting our prompt into numerical values, which is understandable for our model, plus the large language model. So the parameters that both of these um, classes are accepting is the model name and also the directory that we are going to save the both objects. In extra, our model um, needs also another parameter, which is torch D type, which can be auto. So your model is selecting it automatically, but um, you can use it based on the CPU or GPU uh, that your computer is having. So if you are having GPU, you can specify to float 16, but if you are having CPU, you can specify to float 32. So this means that, for example, if you are using float 16, it loads the model in 16 bit precision. So it's a lower bit compared to the float 32. It means that it is faster for inference and less memory is going to be used. Then you have to save both the tokenizer and the model. So here you can see that I already have this uh, directory created because I have run this code before, but okay, here you can see we have uh, different files which is getting saved in our directory, which are both related to the tokenizer and the model. So the first method to load the model is using pipeline, which is a kind of a straightforward. You don't need to specify a lot of parameters and it's quick. So we have to create the generator object by calling the pipeline, specifying the object, which is text generation, and the rest of the parameters are same as before. It's like the model, the tokenizer, and the torch D type. So first, of course, we should specify what is our prompt. And this is the maximum number of uh, tokens that we want to generate. And then we are calling the generator by specifying the prompt and the maximum number of tokens that we want to generate. So this is going to be quite fast to execute. And considering we are not asking a complicated question, and there we go. So as you see, we have just one um, example as the output. So if you are running this in batch, which means that you have multiple prompts and then consequentially you will have multiple outputs. But here I'm just printed the output object that we have just one generated output. So this is the first way. The second way is a bit more complicated, which means that you have more flexibility if you need it. 
for example, for fine tuning of your models uh, or anything else. So we are going to use the a specific class which is created for this model, which is called five for causal LM. That's okay. Uh, let me show you the hugging face uh, page dedicated for this class. Uh, that here we have the overview, the summary, and okay, different explanations. But um, this class is just not for this model. Here you can see there are different models such as BERT, uh, Bloom, uh, we have Coher, I saw also the Falcon. So a lot of models are available. So it's up to you which model you want to use based on your usage. So we are uh, importing this model and uh, then the model that we are creating is coming from this class. The tokenizer is same as before. And uh, then what we have to do is converting our prompt into the tokens, which is this part of the code. And then we have to call the uh, model generator. So what we have to pass is the tokenized prompt, uh, our prompt tokenized version. Then um, attention mask parameter is telling our model which part of the text it should focus on because um, when we are passing the prompt to the tokenizer, it's converting it to a fixed input. So it's including also extra padding to the token. Uh, by this parameter, we are creating an attention mask to tell the model which part of the token is real text and which part it should escape because it's just a padding. And then of course the maximum number of the tokens and after it we should um, decode the generated tokens back to the readable text. So let me run it. Uh, the output it should be really similar to the previous one because we are using the same model with the same uh, kind of parameters. So let's wait a little bit. It should be quite fast and there we go. It's exactly the same. First we have the prompt and then we have the uh, new tokens generated. That's it. Uh, the difference between these two methods as I was telling you is that using pipeline it's much easier to generate the text if you don't need extra configuration while in this way you're having access to the um, other parameters that you can find in the documentation, which is needed maybe for fine tuning or controlling better how the output is getting generated. I hope that you have enjoyed it and see you next time.